headers. Welcome to Joey C TV. Forgive me guys tonight, I'm somewhat losing my voice. And forgive me also because it's been a while. It seems like it's been a while though. It's been about a week since I put out a video. Tonight I'm here at Casadega. Uh, this is the uh, Lake Helen, I believe, cemetery. This is where they have the uh, rumored to be the devil's chair. There's actually two of them. Uh, quite frankly, I don't know which one is which. Don't know if there's any validity to the urban legend. But I'm doing a different type of video tonight. So I've been working on these, like, uh, real talk videos. And I put two together. I never really put the videos out because I felt like I was talking. Um, not as concise as I wanted to. So I wanted to try something a little different tonight. I want to sit in the devil's chair talk to you guys a little bit of real talk but I want to tell you some real creepy things that happened to me and uh, these are true stories this is going to be a different take on a video at a oh my gosh sorry about the wind as well but Something moved right over here, and I don't know what the hell that was. Hold on one second. Forgive me at the wind noise. Holy cow. Something moved right here. I don't know what that was. Alright, well, we're gonna do, uh, this windy night I'm gonna tell you guys some things I'm gonna do kind of a real talk as I promised you guys a real talk but I'm taking you to a creepy cemetery tell you some stories and basically tell you some things that led me here today let's do it ever since I can remember I always wanted to be a gangster you know that's from Goodfellas Okay. Wanted to talk to you guys as well about some things that happen to deal with the paranormal. Some of my experiences. And one of those experiences that I could share with you is just the feeling you get. I get feelings here of something that seems sinister, maybe. Have mercy. It's a very sinister feeling. Now there's another, this may be the devil's chair or that may be the devil's chair. Now, I'm not saying there's any validity to the devil's chair. I'm just saying that that's the name that's given. So I'll tell you a little bit about it. People claim that uh, if you come here at night, you'll pick up spirit activity to the extent of seeing shadow figures, hearing voices. Some claim that they got possessed sitting in this chair. Me, I haven't had really any experiences here. Not so bad. Um, just a, a feeling. 
a creepy feeling. Trying to figure out where should I put my camera? All right, guys, I'm sitting in the supposedly the devil's chair. Again, it could be the one over there, but for all purpose sake, let's say this is it. Let me uh, straighten the camera up a bit. This is it's actually an Oreo cookie all right so like I said um, it's windy tonight I, I don't know if this camera is gonna be all wind noise I hope not I wanted to talk to you guys about some things and uh, talk to you about my paranormal paranormal experiences and then where I am today with those paranormal experiences. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is I'm going to take you back to my to my childhood and um, my grandparents lived in the Bronx and uh, they had this old old farmhouse and I never really knew this but I guess the Bronx at one time in the 1800s was like a lot of farmland and uh, very rich farmland uh, rich meaning the soil like was really good for a farm and um, my grandparents lived in an old farmhouse in the Bronx there were a lot of them there um, very narrow but tall buildings like a four-story with a full basement old old house and uh, my first experiences with the paranormal, I must have been about 10 years old, maybe maybe even younger. And uh, I had a lot of cousins and my sisters and brother. We would go to my grandmother's house when we were little. And um, there was this long hallway and Anyway, this long hallway, and I remember as a little boy being in that house, and I would hear sometimes a little girl whisper in my ear, loud and clear, like there was somebody standing right next to me, and there was never anybody there. And I never told anybody about this when I was a kid. And I remember thinking in my head, who's this little girl that keeps whispering in my ear at my grandmother's house? Anyway, at that time in my life, we moved from the city to Long Island, and I was still a little kid. It would have been around 1973. And um, we moved into this house. It was a new construction, and it had all wood floors. Whew, it's creepy being here. It had all wood floors oak wood floors with a finish on it. We used to run down the hall in our socks and slide. And I remember um, a family member, I'll leave it at that, used to watch us when we were little. My parents would still go out on dates or whatever, you know. And uh, my mom used to grow her fingernails really long and she used to keep her fingernails in a little like jewelry box in the bathroom. And I remember this woman who was a family member who would watch us, me and my sisters, when we were little and my brother was just an infant at that time. And we'd run up and down the hall and our socks slide and we'd always slide past the bathroom and she would stand in the bathroom and she would look at my mother's fingernails because like she would keep her broken fingernails. She used to grow them long when they break off. She'd put them in this jewelry box. Um, and she would say, don't tell your mom that I'm looking at these and I may take a couple. And I remember as a kid her also cutting little locks in my hair and telling 
me not to tell my parents and I was too little to, to do anything about it at that time. Um, but we moved out to Long Island, new construction home. And oddly enough, the neighbor, this woman who lived next door to us, came over to warn my mom about this female who used to watch us when we were kids. She said, I have special powers and I know that this woman is a demon and she's messing with your kids. This is all a true story, guys, now. And I remember as a kid, I used to have horrible nightmares. As a matter of fact, one I remember that I'll never, ever forget is my brother and I shared a bunk bed and I was in the top bunk and uh, our bedroom was down the hall again. We had that long hallway of the oak floors and then the kitchen and my parents' room was upstairs. And I remember laying in the, in the bunk bed, I couldn't sleep, and um, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm scared to death as a kid, and I kept hearing, we didn't have a dishwasher, but I could hear the dishes rattling in the dish drain that was next to the, uh, the sink in the kitchen. I could hear them going clink, 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 clink. And then I would hear a voice go, Joe, Joe, and I screamed for my mother, and, my mom and dad came running in the room and I'm sitting up in the bunk bed. They turn the light on. My mom's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, mom, I keep hearing the dishes banging around. She goes, oh, don't you know, in, on Long Island, we get little earthquakes here. You don't have to worry about that. I said, yeah, but mom, there's somebody calling my name. And she looks at me and goes, son, don't you know when you hear your name in the wind, it's the devil calling you? And then she, my dad left the room shut the light off and I was scared all night shaking and then the next morning I was like mom how could you do that to me I was so scared and my mom's like I never came in your room that night well anyway living in that house I started hearing these voices in my head almost and they were and it was cursing God they kept saying F God F God F God over and over to the point where I was like what's what's going on with me why is this happening and the dreams and nightmares picked up more and more and more and more anyway so years later you know I'm probably in my 20s and I was telling my sister about it and we were talking about the family member who, who watched me she said, my sister goes, are you serious? Because I remember the same person taking locks of my hair when I was little. And then my sister said, you know, I used to hear this voice going, F God, F God, F God, over and over. And I told her the same thing happened to me. We were both like unbelievably freaked out. Anyway, there's a, there's a reason why I'm telling you this story. So moving forward in my life, those things kind of went away. and um, I was at one time a very shy, introverted person or kid. And, you know, I, I, you know, I started be, uh, becoming really good at, you know, athletics. And, um, you know, and that shy kid kind of transformed through me doing these athletics. And, you know, and I went away to college. I had this big dream of being, uh, you know, a writer. I wanted to be the great American novelist. And um, anyway, taking you back to when I started doing videos. And as I mentioned previously, Rob and I would do these videos. We had no idea about the paranormal. The things from my past never came up again from when I was a kid. Until we started doing videos, we started picking up these creepy voices. Frank Lloyd Wright House in Hillside Estates. And people always ask me, what's real and paranormal? And what I discovered on my journey was... And, and let me preface this with, at one time we staged videos. I think I said that a thousand times, but I'm going to say it again. But it does tie in with what I'm saying. 
So when Rob and I started the videos, I was broken. I went through a divorce. I, I, you know, I was, I was in a bad spot in my life, spiritually, especially spiritually. And um, I let let my guard way down and kind of became. a shell of what I should have been, but I did, we're human, we all make mistakes. But when I started the videos, it became a venue for me to express my creativity. I love that about these videos. And we didn't realize we were picking up paranormal. And we staged videos, uh, eventually we got into that, which I'm a totally different person now. As a matter of fact, the thought of that kind of angers me that I even did that but I have to own up to my own self. Um, I don't believe there's such a thing as ghosts. In my experience, I'm no expert. I think it's always been demons, and I think what it does to you, like when we started the videos, for example, it knows you're already down. I knew that I, you know, I was in a vulnerable spot and it invited me and said, come on in, let's make some money, make some videos. And in my head, it was a way out of the situation I put myself in, I suppose. But we were picking up these crazy disembodied voices and they were sinister. And then I realized, it took me a long time to realize this, but even when I was staging videos, there was some, it was like a demon taking you by your hand and pulling you into, playing along with you, whatever you did, whatever kind of video you wanted to do. And then we were getting calls from like TV producers and all kinds of stuff, which is really another evil. Um, I remember Rob and I speaking to this one particular uh, well-known TV producer, which I'll leave his name out. And I remember one of the things they asked me was, "Hey, you pray in your videos? You know, we don't we don't promote that kind of agenda. We promote the opposite of that." And man, that's a scary thought, guys. And then I used to play around with like, you know. These, these apps that seem ridiculous, like Necrophonic, the Spirit Box, and all that. And what I mean by Demons Play Along is it'll let you think that you're picking up something and it's, you're excited about it. You're, you're ready to go. You know, you're excited. This is you're picking up all this paranormal activity. But what I failed, failed to realize is it was leading me down a road, making me think that I was actually, what was that? Something just made a breathy noise near me, I think. What it does is it's, it's enticing. I suppose it's like someone, you know, becoming addicted to a substance. Let's say at first it's very euphoric maybe, and you know, makes you feel good, makes you forget about your problems, but the more you use, the more it degrades you, the more you, the more you need, and the more you lose yourself. And I think that's what oppression is, or if not oppression, uh, maybe possession. And what I mean by that is, in the height of me doing all these videos, I started getting further and further away from things in my life that were important to me, people that were important to me. And I kind of let that stuff fall by the wayside. Nevertheless, I always had God in my heart, but I started losing God. Um, I would pray when I felt like I needed to pray, but I used God kind of like a band-aid to put it. If something in my life wasn't going right, I'd 
pray to God and then ask for God to help me and then I'd forget about God. I even got to the point where I started questioning if God was real. And I remember passing a church and feeling angry just passing a church. And I didn't even realize it, but maybe there was something oppressing me, slowly taking me down this road. And I really believe that to be true. I believe that it started consuming me. And, man, this is getting spookier. The more I talk, it's like something doesn't want me to tell you guys this. Anyway, it started consuming me in the sense of all the good things in my life were just disappearing around me. And, um, it wasn't until recently that I really started praying to God and really putting God first in my life. A lot of people were asking, what's the change in me? That's the change. It's a remarkable thing in how much your life can turn around by putting God first. Um, therefore, my videos are different, right? People are asking about my videos, but they're different in the sense of, I put God first, I, I, I don't believe in staging videos. Um, I think that you're playing with demons, in my opinion, when you even do that. I think that what you're doing is putting out there, yourself out there, in a light that maybe has to do with greed, maybe has to do with, you know, some deadly sins, guys, seriously. And I'm only saying this because I lived it. So I prayed a lot on this, and I said, God, what can you, what can you do, or what can I do to put out that message? And now I see the world so different. Um, I think that the more you try to get closer to God, the scary thing is the more something may try to trip you up. Now, is paranormal real? It absolutely is real, 100%. But what the experiences in my life are, what are real is the oppression that could happen the heightened sense you get at places like this place tells me I gotta get the F out of here, but I'm gonna still sit here. The little voices that are picked up, guys, what is that? Is that a ghost? Is it a demon trying to lure you in? Remember, the trick of the devil is to make you think he doesn't exist. To slowly take you down that path because if the devil jumped out with a pitchfork on horns, you'd run the other way, right? But it's a subtle thing. And then you look at this world and all the people in this world, we all suffer. And I realized, this is what I realized, no matter what you do, no matter how much money you have or don't have, we all suffer the same plight. And that is the trap. The trap of loving money over people. The trap of never feeling good enough about yourself unless you have material items. And those are the traps, guys. It's just that simple. So now I look at life very differently. I look at, I love making videos. It's always been a creative part of me. Um, I'm, I'm starting to write again. I'm starting to, you know, stop and smell the roses, if you will. Look at life differently. I look at it very differently now. Um, do How do I feel here right now? If I was to, somebody to ask me, I feel that something doesn't want me here. I don't think this message really, something doesn't want me to even put out this message because it's the truth. And um, people were asking me, you know, oh, you know, I watch all these different videos on YouTube and I, I would say, in my opinion, most of the videos you see on YouTube about the paranormal are fake. Um, again, I'm not singling out anybody. I'm not trying to point the finger at anybody because we all have our own road. We all have our own challenge. So with that being said, that's really what I wanted to talk about. I think that was inspired by God to talk about. Um, I think that being here is a very big challenge. It's scary, guys. I can't lie. Oof. It's a 
ugly here. Let me, uh, let's walk around now that I'm done talking. Anyway, I'm really appreciating more the uh, cemetery videos than ever. There's something to be said for not sitting inside a, uh, walking around an abandoned building. I love it, but man, there's a lot of risk in that, especially in the health field. Like, who knows what you're breathing in. Look at that, there's a tricycle in here. Why? There must be, okay, there's a little kid's grave, man, that's right. How sad. Anyway, I love making spooky videos. I'm gonna definitely implement videos of me working my way back to uh, a better health because my diabetes has been crazy out of control. And uh, that's really an important thing to get that under control. This, is, this camera shuts off at 30 minutes, so it's gonna shut off in a second here. This again is Thatcher and Thatcher for the people. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to uh, make more here tonight, but it's so windy. Guys, that was super weird. So my camera does shut off at 30 minutes and it shut off, but it wouldn't turn back on. Battery's fine. Anyway, um, I wanted to bring you a different type of video. I wanted to answer some questions. I want to move forward with this channel in a very positive way, bringing you guys the best of the best because you deserve the best of the best. Um, this place makes, like, again, like, if I could explain, like, paranormal, this place just feels paranormal, if that makes sense. <laughs> Holy crap, man. I don't know. Some people say they can watch the videos and sense, you know, stuff. If you were here, you'd feel it. It just feels like there's shadows moving all around me. Clearly there's not, but it feels that way. I think when you're dealing with something dark, like an oppression type thing, man, it's hard, unless, unless you accept God and, and truly accept God, I don't think you can get rid of it. And I'm glad, whatever it was, I feel like I got rid of it now. Does it still want to be around? I think so, because it makes me feel it. But I know God's got me. But it will try to trip you up if you're not careful. Again, I'm not trying to preach to anybody. I'm simply telling you my story. And in my heart, I feel that's what God wanted me to share with you guys. So to answer the question, is paranormal real? Yep, 100%. Alright guys, I'm going to start heading back. Um, so to answer the question, is paranormal real? I think it is. But I don't think it's... 
it's not, you know, a ghost in a house throwing a chair at you or something. I think it's the, um, the oppression that comes. I think it's demons that try to lure you in. My opinion, guys, I can only give you my opinion. Again, I'm no expert. But my opinion, from my experience, will make you do things you normally wouldn't do. It's a slow, degrading. So, here, I guess from, for all purpose sake, I guess it could have had me at one time, right? Thank God every day it doesn't. That being said, go in love and peace. I'm going to do a lot of videos this weekend. But I did promise a real talk. Kind of a real talk. I guess it's... I, I didn't want my real talk to come off as a lecture. But I wanted to come off with the truth. So... That being said, I'm going to head home. It's getting late. It's cold. Yeah. Love and peace.